now uh, wanting to let Auckland know that our community of 5 million cares about them, that they're not alone, that we're thinking of them and we recognise and appreciate their sacrifice has been the brainchild of a new social media community launched today called Kekaha Auckland. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it is that we have now, more than previous to the lockdown, the opportunity to create connections between rural and urban for our kids, mums, dads, whānau, schools, sports teams and communities. Joining us now to discuss is industry leader, NZX Dairy Analyst and all-round connector Julia Jones. Julia, uh, welcome to Sarah's Country. Now, our hello. Ta- hello, our town and country lives are very different but also mutually dependent upon each other. Why is it so important that Auckland city communities feel supported by us in rural New Zealand right now? Well I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I mean one of them it's 1.6 million people so it's a large portion of our population. Secondly they're humans. You know we, we need to show compassion and love and and let them know that we are thinking of them. It's it's different when you're in a national lockdown because everyone's in the same position, but there's that sense at the moment that they're the ones who are, are I guess, creating a bit of sacrifice. And, and from the sacrifice, there will be a sense of uncertainty for some of those businesses up there that aren't going to know what it might look like um, once they're out of this this stage of the lockdown. Now, I received a press release from the wonderful team at Dairy Women's Network at one of the many groups that have come together collectively around this concept. How did you get involved? And can you tell us a bit more about the concept? Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was just over the weekend. Lee Estridge sent an email out to a couple of us and just said, hey, look, how do we show Auckland that we're there for them? What can we do to support them? And, you know, you come up with heaps of ideas and we're like, let's do adopt a calf and all these things. And what we realise is there is an immediate need. So messaging for the immediate need now, but then there will be a greater need in the future. We don't know what that looks like yet, but we want to be part of the solution and, and whether that be ensuring that there is food going into food banks, into Auckland for support. Whether businesses in the rural community are connecting with businesses in, in Auckland to try and show support or whether it be, uh, you know, employment. We all know that it's the Grow New Zealand. Um, there's a lot of employment in the rural regions. And so I guess that's the longer term thing, but the immediate action is to just show support, a little bit of compassion and actually get some good messages, some positive thinking and hopefully some laughs because we all know our fabulous rural characters we've got out there and that's what we want to see on the page. Absolutely. And I was just thinking um, from that page, I would like to then extend and uh, showcase on Serious Country some wonderful video messaging because that was something that touched me and, and would have touched the processing workers across the country uh, where farmers were saying, sp- sending those messages to those most affected to say thank you for what they were doing on our behalf. What type of messaging would you like to encourage rural New Zealand to get behind Kia Kaha Auckland's Facebook page? Look, I mean, I think it's dads to dads, mums to mums, kids to kids, business owners to business owners. It's It's got to be a personal thing of what you feel, so make it authentic. Um, but, but the key messaging is that thank you, you know, you eat our produce, you appreciate our produce, and we want to show you how much we appreciate you. Uh, and, and that we're all the same, really. You know, we live in different areas. Look, I work in Auckland and I live in the Waikato, so I get the great opportunity to kind of live in these two worlds. I love both. Um, and I think it's just about bringing everyone together, connecting. At the end of the day, we're actually a really small country. And if we don't connect, um, we're just going to implode. Mm, and of course, lockdown nationally showed us uh, an increasing amount of connection um, to our food production systems, particularly with the ability that probably a lot of New Zealanders didn't realise we're a net uh, exporter of food. And food security was something that we were very privileged to have in this country. Um, how have you found it sort of developing uh, over the last wee while as well? Is this something we can nurture and continue to nurture there? Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're classified as an essential service, there is is a great sense of pride of that. Uh, You know, so I think what it did highlight, though, that there are some supply chain issues. And I think, you know, I've seen a lot of social media around making sure that our green grocers or our fresh market um, vegetable places can stay open. And it's not just supermarkets that we're actually getting food through. Um, I'm on Meet the Need boards, um, and I feel really privileged to be part of that. So making sure 
that, and we'd love more donations. I'm going to use this as a wee dirty pitch, but we need more donations out of the North Island so we can make sure we're supporting our North Island um, food banks as well and giving consistent supply. So, yeah, I mean, I think that essential service thing was so important for Pride. What we've got to continue to do, though, is make sure we do all the right things in our businesses and acknowledge that there are businesses in Auckland that will be shut down and will never start again. And, and we're fortunate that we're not that in that position. Yeah, just touching on that, and we'll be joined by Richard Rennie from Global HQ to continue on around some of the food wastage and security supply chain situations, particularly more in horticulture and uh, vegetables. But the public sentiment appears less supportive this time round of butchers being remained closed. Uh, and as you see, green grocers, are we starting to get our head around the animal welfare situation um, that has a flow on effect from lockdown, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think probably what we've started to do is get a little bit more, um, and I mean this with love, is a bit more logical and into how we see food. I think also we've got some really good reports that are coming out that are practical, that are saying it's not about plants and it's not just about animals, it's actually about having a balanced diet. Somewhat, you know, most of our grandmothers could have potentially written that report, but, you know, it took science to do it. So I think in that sense, our, our relationship with food has shifted. You know, it's, it's, we are actually omnivores. We are actually set up to eat both meat and veg. And I think that, that meat, when you can't access it and you can't get that protein that you require, that's actually quite scary. You know, there were those moments where it was a little bit spooky. You go online to do your shopping and it's three weeks out where you can't even get a spot to get into it. Or you get to the supermarket and there was no meat there, that all the mince was gone. Or So I think there was a sense of greater appreciation for that nutrition. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, t- touching on meet the need, can you please make it very specifically clear to those listening uh, on demand later or right now how they can donate? Because the likes of Joel Rock, he's um, he comes from he's a very good model citizen. He said last night he would donate ten million dollars of his lotto winnings to meet the need. That was his chosen charity. Could should he have had livestock? And I said, Joel, you don't need to. So how can people get involved? So you can do it on our website. So it's meettheneed.org.nz, or it might just be .org. That's terrible, isn't it? I should have known exactly what that is. <laughs> and um, so you can either donate a virtual beast, you can donate dollars, or as a farmer, you can donate a beast. And I think the most important thing to point out is what people are getting is export quality mints that is going into our food bank. So we're giving the best, best, best quality food it's not about the waste food. It's not about what's left over. It's actually high quality. So you can go on our website and don't, donate money or you can um, donate a beast um, uh, to your, to, through um, if you're doing any culling through silver fern farms. So there's lots of different ways you can support us. And, of course, the reason why we have Julia Jones on the show tonight on Sarah's Country uh, is, of course, the Kia Kaha Auckland Facebook page. So over the next week, Julia, um, just to send, it's reiterate again, some of the messages, is it might even be a simple photo to post to that page yeah. to say, we're thinking of you. Yeah, and look, and also connecting with Auckland people. What I'm scared about is sometimes in rural, we get really good at talking to other rural people, and then we get frustrated that no one else got the message. We can't just be great at talking to each other. We've got to get this message out into Auckland. So share it with your friends on Facebook, you know, your Auckland friends. I know you'll all at least have one. And just get it out there and get the messages on there. Keep them coming. That We can't have too many messages. And if you're a bit shy, a wee photo is of a gorgeous lamb or a gorgeous calf or whatever is going to be more than enough. Or your beautiful family. Oh, I just need to read out a couple of comments here. Tony has said, great work, JJ and team. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And uh, Christy has said, well said, reconnecting Julia. Auckland needs the regions and the regions need Auckland. Yeah, this yeah. I cold. think we can't kind of try and divide it. I think it's important that we actually just stick together in all this. Hey, and I'm not going to let you get away. I tantalised you with all that beautiful fruit talk. What's your favourite? Oh, I do love a Fiji and absolutely wild um, blackberries. We used to pick them. I lived in Ross on the West Coast and we used to pick them. They were all down the sides of the roads. I was actually just going to ask you if they were spray free, but on the sides of the roads? I don't know. I mean, I, clearly it didn't impact me at all. I mean, <laughs> maybe it did. Maybe that's the reason. Oh, absolutely. I totally understand what you mean, especially on the West Coast, <laughs> picking them with my mother. It's a great time. Thank you so much, Julia, as always, for everything that you do for uh, this country and our industry. This is Sarah's Country.